Hey guys, Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming, coming at you today with our newest installment in our Gears 5 Escape Guides for Master Difficulty. Today we're going to be tackling Melee Brawl. As you can see, the classes we're going to be bringing in, we've got Beardsley running Anchor for that Boltock bleed damage. Pyro is going to be running Infiltrator with the Shotgun bleed and Laceration cards and damage increase. And I'm going to be running Protector. You can see that I've got... Uh, Regenerative Field active so I can gain stim when I'm not taking damage, Bloody Blade for bleed damage, Big Knife, Close Range Recharge to get my Bubble Shields and my Nasher uh, Modification card for increased, increased Nasher damage. Uh, this, mi this map is relatively challenging, there's a few parts that are going to probably give you a little bit of trouble, but hopefully with these tricks and tactics you'll be able to get through it without too much difficulty. Um, this guide is being made after the coalition said there'll be there won't be any more updates, so these tactics should last right through um, without any changes needed. For our modifiers, we have freezing Amago bullets, so Amagos are going to freeze you very quickly. Shock wardens, so any melee attack from wardens is going to cause a shock shock chain. More melee damage, so enemies that get up close are going to do extra damage. And then we've got some of the normal master difficulty modifiers like more lethal, Iron Man, faster venom, and more health. Um, so not too bad difficulty, uh, not too bad modifiers wise, but you just need to be very, very careful around the Imagos because they will freeze you extremely quickly. Um, I'm going to be kind of tanking a lot of damage, actually Pyro and I will since we can gain stim. That stim buys you precious seconds when you come under fire from your Imagos, so it's a very, very useful skill to have, as is my bubble shield. Um, when you get into a sticky spot and you're out in the open, you can drop that bubble shield and buy yourself time to you know, get to cover and un unfreeze, so to speak. So right when we start, we're in a safe room with pipes. Um, I'm grabbing a pipe because my bleed damage actually transfers to all melee weapons. And when we come across wardens, my regular melee won't do any damage, but a pipe will. So we're going to come down the left side, uh, left side of that first ramp. We want to come onto this little platformed area. Take out these imagos. There's going to be some, you could go down the right side and you'll end up with... Um, Juvies and a Sire, and they will switch sides. Sometimes you'll have the Juvies and the Sires on the left, sometimes they'll be on the right, but we always go down the left side to hit this safe room here. I'm sorry, not a safe room, an ammo room. Um, we always hit this ammo room here just because I'm going to be using my pipe and I'd like to be able to refill it, plus it gives you a couple of flash grenades, which in this map the flash grenades are very important. Um, so pick up whatever you can, there's a frag in here. So we, we just gather up what we need. Everyone's running pipe right now because it does give you a little bit of additional melee damage. And once you've cleaned up this first set of enemies, you're going to advance to this cover. Um, we have one Imago. Sometimes you'll have a Scion push up on you. And the Scion can be different. You're going to face the Scion when you come down to the convergence of paths right down here. Along with Grenadiers and other things. We get an Ice Scion and I almost get frozen. Uh, but you can see that bleed damage between Beardsley's Boltock and my melee took him down really quickly. And again, that stim gave me a precious second to get a couple extra melee hits on him. So it works really well. Um, as you can see, there's nothing too fancy right here. Kind of stick close together so if you get downed, you can help each other up. You see here, Beardsley and I both get down by the combination of the Grenadiers and the Imagos. So Pyro tries to throw a flash to buy himself some time to get down and revive us, but unfortunately he missed. But it had the desired effect. He was able to get down and get to us, so it sort of worked, just, you know, he, it failed while working. Um, so as we come down here, you're going to have some Grenadiers. That's where your Infiltrator is going to want to pick up their first shotgun. I'm advancing up the steps here. I'm playing the Protector class. That's the uh, perspective you're going to see. And when you come up these stairs, you're going to have a bunch of Juvies um, come down the stairs at you. If you get, we found that if you get a buzzkill scion, you can actually grab the buzzkill and sort of stand on one of the levels of the stairway and take them out, take out the juvies very effectively with that buzzkill. Um, and I've seen some people use Cole at this point or the Brawler class for the uh, dash and bash ability, but I find that the bleed damage and the melee from the protector is more consistent and easier to pull off. So just kind of do a couple of strikes and then dive away from the juvies and you should be fine. Uh, in addition, those two sires that came down after the juvies are actual can actually be additional grenadiers. Um, but either way, it's not too difficult. There's only ever two of them. And once you get up to this, up past the stairs, there's a safe room or an ammo room on the right. 
with a buzz kill. Um, you can grab it if you want, not super necessary, but load up on whatever you can grab from that ammo room and then we're going to advance. We're actually at the last spot, the last fight before the safe room. And this is where we're going to face our first warden. So you can see I kind of advanced a little bit to trigger the enemies. We get sires. Um, I think you can actually get drones, either grenadiers or rifle drones here instead of the sires that rush up. But if you get any of the enemies, again, playing the protector class, just a couple of melee hits and dive around, that bleed damage takes them out really quickly. And this right here is why I have a pike. You can see with between the stim and um, with my stim and the melee from the pipes sort of stunning the warden, I was able to get five hits in on that warden. And that brought him down to nearly about three quarter or only a quarter of his health remaining. Beardsley then came in with his Boltock and cleaned up the rest of that health on the warden with a few well-placed headshots and we were good to go. Uh, you can see here some of the other enemies sort of pushed up on us as we were taking out that warden. One of the Imagos had me targeted and I was getting a little nervous that I was going to freeze so I dropped my bubble shield just to let myself thaw out and gain my stem back. Again, that's why I love that bubble shield. And if you're playing Protector, make sure you grab that Breaker Mace. It is going to be very, very helpful in the next part um, next part of the map after the safe room. Now, this is a tricky section. There are a lot of enemies stacked up in that last corridor before you get to the safe room door. Beardsley's doing his best to try to do a little bit of damage and get some bleed on those enemies. I try to advance and spread their field of fire, but you really don't have a lot of cover. Beardsley's going to try and use a shield right here and he actually gets meleeed down. Um, I wasn't expecting that, so I end up getting downed, and then Beardsley gets downed again. So thankfully Pyro was playing it smart. He was holding back so we, he could revive us, um, but he was right there with the clutch double revive. I was trying to get to cover, get downed again, so this is a very difficult part. Take it slow. You can see we've got plenty of time. We're not even in the non-lethal venom yet, um, and just sort of take pick your shots. You know, I get downed again here, so it gets a little crazy a little messy um, because you don't have a lot of ammo I'm trying my best to close in on these enemies and get some melee hits you can see we're all stacked up behind that one pillar trying to take cover um, and finally we get something going the I had the enemies focused on Beardsley up on that platform so I was able to close and get a couple of hits on both of those drones and take them down but once you take out those enemies you are into the safe room um, Again, that last part's a little hectic. Beardsley's just going back here to gather up weapons that the enemies have dropped. Probably mostly hammer burst. Um, but you're going to want to just kind of sit on that corner by that pillar. Let the enemies come to you. You can see that the bad venom, the deadly venom, isn't even close to where we were yet. So you have plenty of time. Um, I just skipped the safe room. There's a couple of grenades in there. Not a lot that, uh, not a lot to really help you out because it's a melee brawl and we don't get a lot of ammo. So, anyway... Uh, as soon as you come out of the safe room door, what you're going to want to do is go to the left. There's a safe room here, or a ammo room here with a door that you can use to buy yourself some time if you start getting overwhelmed. You can see I've got my breaker mace out. Uh, my teammates are throwing flashes in the door to stop the enemies from rushing us, and I'm just going to town. As they come around the corner, I am hitting them with the breaker mace, hitting them with the pipe, or hitting them with my regular melee attacks. Um, there should have been, I should have been more on the door to prevent enemies from shooting in like this, but I got sidetracked trying to help people up and to keep people from, uh, you know, just from get, getting downed. So that breaker mace, the area of effect on it is pretty wide, and you could see right at the beginning there was a buzzkill scion up on that little platform to the left of the door. Uh, so I hit him a couple of times and he bled down really quickly with that pipe. So the pipe is very effective if you're playing a melee class like Protector or Blade Master. So anyway, I'm in here just looking to see what there are for grenades, trying to top off my pipe because sometimes you can pick up a pipe to reload your pipe or refill your pipe, which I guess that makes sense in the Gears universe. Um, but once all these enemies are down, go ahead and have one of your teammates or one person grab your, the buzzkill from that Scion. I'm not sure if he's always a buzzkill Scion, but the times that we've run this map, it's always been a buzzkill Scion for us. So if you get the buzzkill scion, come up here, you're going to see I, as the melee class, I run around to the left side here to try and pick off some enemies as they run up, but Pyro has that buzzkill and he's just launching it down this, down this corridor through this kind of doorway, trying to take out as many of the juvies as he can that are coming through. Um, 
depending upon who aggros the juvies it's sometimes more effective sometimes less effective you can see he just had a chain reaction with the poppers right there um, and he ended up going down because they aggroed on me instead of him we could have probably had me stand back a little bit more but you know that wasn't what we were running for a tactic so it didn't happen but that buzzkill can definitely help cut through that swarm of juvies fairly effectively uh, you can see right there there are some omagos when you get through that doorway on the left hand side I executed one but alerted the other and he started shooting at me so I dropped my bubble shield to prevent myself from freezing again another great reason to keep that bubble shield as a card and run this protector class and once you're past the room with all the juvies and the uh, Imagos, you're going to come to this, the bridge lift, uh, the bridge raise. There's two ammo rooms that you can load up on. There's fl plenty of flash grenades, and the second one closest to the bridge is actually a shock grenade. Um, you can see I'm pretty much topped out on my melee weapons. I've got two flashes, and we are, I believe Pyro just went to raise the bridge, and we're going to hold this room right here. Um, this can get really tricky because there are a lot of enemies that spawn in. I have one of the teammates toss a shock grenade right in the doorway. We actually leave the door open in an attempt to lure in as many juvies through that door as possible. And the plan is to try to time it so you have a popper in the shock um, that, go, that detonates in the shock and takes out a bunch of the juvies at, with it. Um, didn't really happen that time. The juvie, the popper sort of just ran right through the shock field without slowing down. But usually you can get a, at least, if not a chain reaction, at least the popper to take out a couple enemies with it. So now we're doing the same thing we did in the first safe room. We're sort of sitting here. Um, I pop my bubble shield to prevent the enemies from shooting through the door because there are a lot of drones out there. Um, and the nice thing about this bubble shield is that projectiles can't get through, but melee can. So you can sit just on the edge of the bubble shield and melee enemies, and it's not going to, you're not going to take a whole lot of damage. Um, but what you can do is sort of sit in that doorway, toss flash grenades, and just pick off the enemies a little at a time. If you're following this guide and, and using these classes, then that melee class is going to be a big boon for you because you get a breaker mace with a lot of bleed damage, and it can take out a large group of enemies that are bunched up around the door. So once the bridge is raised, you can see the venom sort of catches up to you there, so you do have to be keeping a pretty good pace. Um, we come up to this room, and this is a big open room. You have a bunch of Imagos on the right hand side, and this is really the reason that we ran Beardsley as an anchor, because we want that long distance bleed damage. Um, one or two of his shots with the active reload and the bleed is enough to drop an Imago. So he's going to town trying to thin out their numbers. Um, you could see right at the bridge raise we had left a couple of Imagos behind us assuming the Venom would take him out. But one of them caught up to us and was actually hassling us from behind so I ran back to take care of him. And again, you can see how quickly that freeze effect t sets in. So you need to be very, very careful about your Imagos and how, how much damage you take from them. Uh, there's a couple of times in this run where I was right on the edge of being frozen solid, so be very wary of that. Um, make sure you're using your cover, and just don't uh, don't keep your head poked out for too long. So once you're in this room, you're going to clear out those imagos as best you can, and you're going to try to make it over to this right side where these pillars are. It gives you a better uh, perspective, I guess, on the room, and gives you a lot more maneuverability and cover. You can see there's two wardens right at the end of this map and they, we had one of them come out a little sooner, um, which was great. We don't want to fight two of them at once. They staggered their appearance. I was able to grab my breaker mace, uh, pick up that breaker mace that he dropped to refill my other, my existing mace. Second warden comes out. I'm going to do the same thing. He's focused on me, and I'm kind of hoping that, or waiting for him to draw it to aggro to a different teammate. Um, and I whiffed on my, my melee shots here, but... There we go, just hit him with that breaker mace, you can see the bleed damage sets in. Pyro's laying into him with a shotgun, Beardsley was hitting him with his uh, bull talk. Plenty of bleed damage and he dropped pretty quick. Uh, Pyro was lagging behind and I was panicking he was going to actually die in the venom, but he decided to grab the additional breaker mace for me and carry it to the end just in case we needed it. And the venom had caught up so much that the doors actually started closing on us already. So as soon as, uh, ideally what you'd like to do is plant a flash or a shot grenade down in the opening um, to this last area because what it's going to do is slow down all these juvies and would hopefully give Pyro and 
Beardsley time to pick off some of the poppers, but since the door started closing, the rush happened right at the end. But I have my breaker mace kind of just standing in the opening, smashing down on anything that gets close, and we were, you know, that's it. That's the end of Melee Brawl. I hope this guide helps, and you stick around for more guides like this. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day everyone.